My name is Carly Jones and I'm the founder of Kettlebell Kitchen and today I'm ready to tell the truth. What is the truth, Carly? Tell me about when you first set up Kettlebell Kitchen. Um, I set up Kettlebell Kitchen in 2016 on a bit of a whim. I um, had 40 grand savings and I thought I had a mad idea and uh, people were saying ah, it's not going to work, healthy fast food, like where's the sense in that? But um, I seen a gap in the market and I thought, let's go for it. Um, so, uh, open Kettlebell Kitchen. Why did you choose Kettlebell Kitchen? I wanted like a really quirky name where you could tell by looking at it that it was healthy food and it mm. was gym related food and it had a nice little ring to it and you could break it down to KBK, which I liked, so. So, where, where did you first open? So we first opened in Ancoat in Manchester um, and we got it right. The first unit smashed it, did so well. What, what when you say so well, what were you doing? Um, it was just the vibe that it just started ballooning in Manchester. It was something that was missing and would fill this void. Um, you know, we created a hub really where people could come, gym related people, CrossFit people, bodybuilders that could come and kind of congregate in one place, get healthy food, listen to good tunes and uh, meet each other, mingle, and it was kind of like the place to be, really, for, for healthy post um, Was anybody else food. doing that? Um, there was a few, yeah. I would say there was um, similar. Um, so I wouldn't say that the idea was original. Um, I certainly can't claim that. But um, they were doing it on small scales, and I knew that I wanted to do it big, and I wanted to hit Manchester in the city centre. Um, at the time, Ancoats was up and coming, so we were one of the first people to open around there. Um, we've got a great deal on the unit. Yes, rent free. Um, and yeah. What was, your, what was your goal with it? When you first set it up, what was your vision for it? The vision and the dream was to have a big, a big brand really, but also to educate people that fast food doesn't need to be so unhealthy. Um, and that healthy food doesn't need to be so bland and boring. Do you know? Yeah. Um, and it was kind of, we hit it at the right time. You know, it, at this point, you didn't have protein pots at M&S. You couldn't just nip in and, and grab, um, you know what I mean, some vegan food. It, it, it was just at the height, or the, sorry, the start of it. it. It hadn't even kind of begun, really. Um, so we just got in there at the right time. And when did you think to yourself, this is going to be massive? Did you, was there a point where you thought to yourself, Oh my God, this is like... Mm. I had to keep pinching, pinching myself. Um, I didn't realise what I was actually creating because I was so busy running around like a headless chicken trying to keep up with the demand of this business. You know, we'd have queues out of the door. And when we opened it, um, I mean, we didn't pay a company to design the unit. We just shoved it together. Literally, my cousin from Newcastle came up, who was a builder, and he just, we worked together on fitting this thing out. I had, didn't have a clue what it was going to look like. You know, my logo was sketched on a bit of paper and someone digitalised it for free. Like, that's, you know, it was raw, this. It was really raw. We didn't have enough money to fit the floor. Stuff like that. Have you had an experience before in anything like this? Um, no. So I, I came from a call centre background, so managing people was, was a yes. Um, but nothing like this. I'd never served anyone behind a bar or, or at a table before in my life. So I was learning as I was going. I was making it up. I was winging it. Um, we'd laid it all out wrong. We didn't put a sink front of house. So when we were doing fresh shakes, we had to run through the back of the kitchen. And, you know, it's like a traffic jam and trying to wash the jugs and come back again. It was carnage, man. And when you put a queue out the door and you're sweating and people are kicking off because the food's taking too long. Um, but it worked. People kept coming back. In year one, we did, um, we did 1.2 million quid turnover and we did a 200 grand profit. In your first year? In my first year. And all on my own. There was no investors. There was nobody telling us what to do or involved. So obviously people are sniffing around now thinking, oh, yeah. oh Carly, can I invest in this? Yes. So what? Tell me that. So I had, I had um, quite a lot of interest at that point. Um, I had an offer on the table. Uh, and it was a local, lovely Manchester businessman. He came in and he was like, I want to speak to Carly Jones. He'd, he'd done his research, he knew who I was. And he sat us down and he made us an offer. Um, what was the was, offer? It, the offer was 500 grand for 25% of me company. But he was placing the money 
before he'd even invested the money in his own companies. Do you know what I mean? So I was a little bit like, ooh, a bit nervous. So um, I confided in one of my friends. A good friend? At the time. Yeah, a good friend. Good, I would consider him a good friend and, and kind of a men mentor in business, really, for me. Um, and he, he turned around and said, look, I can't give you 500 grand, but I want to invest. I want to help you grow this business and, and make this into something amazing. You know, this, this dream that you've got, let's, t let's go drive-throughs, let's, let's grow like mad, you know, what over you loads in Manchester. And uh, I was kind of, he, he could only invest 100 grand for the same shares. So I've got these two offers on the, on the table, one from someone I don't know and don't trust, because I don't know him, um, and it's, it's a big chunk of money, and this could really take me somewhere. And I've got this uh, offer of someone I know and trust, but it's nowhere near. It's a, f it's, you know, it's a fifth of that. So what, what do I do? Do I go with me heart? Do I go with me head? And what did I choose? I went with me heart. I went with the... What, the is, what is he saying to you to kind of convince you to go with him? Because obviously um, it's not just one conversation you're having with him. You're obviously having a... he's playing off the other guy. You know, he's saying, look, why go with Looking him? back on it now, do you feel manipulated from that position that that person's put you in? Um, not too much then. I mean, I regret that decision, of course I do, because, but I cannot live with regrets, you know, you, you can't do that, but I went with my heart like I always do, and I should have gone with the, the bigger offer, would I have been in a different position right now, probably. Um, but, you know, he... He said, look, I'm going to be hands-on, I'm going to help you, I'm going to grow this. Me and you are going to be a team to be, to be reckoned with, you know. And that is what pulled us in. A bit like the dragon scenario, yeah. you know. Some people just want that dragon and they don't care what it takes to get them in, you know. And that's, I kind of just wanted him. I felt safe. I felt I trusted this guy. And what happened? I should never have trusted him. Why? Um, one thing led to another and... Um, we grow, we continue the business, it's, it's going crazy, we're, you know, we've, we've um, signed up more stores, we're doing body power, we're doing all these huge events and um, we'll get a head office unit and um, uh, we end up buying Soulmate Food, another, another meal prep company. And, um, what it, is Soulmate Food? It's, it was probably one of the first meal prep companies to, to start in the UK. How big um, is it? Sorry? How big was it? Um, Pretty big. I would say it was the second biggest to, to Kettlebell, uh, if not on par. Um, so this, uh, the company was in liquidation at this point. This was um, Soulmate Food. And Jamie said, look, we've got a chance to buy it. Let's do it. Let's buy it. We've got the money. Let's buy it. You know, this is going to put us, this is going to make us the biggest meal prep company. We're going to, you know, we're just going to balloon from here. Um, are you thinking that's a good decision again, or are you just relying on... Um, I seen the brand and I was bought in by that. I've got to admit, you know, I really wanted that company. I used to have a juice cleanse with Soulmate Food like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and so to, to think that I could actually have a, this company was... And was it financially viable, that business at that time? Did you... Where, where are you sort of at this point, the businesswoman that I know, mm -hmm. are you thinking numbers back then? Or are you thinking that I used to have this brand and I used to have a juice and mm. you're going with that more than looking oh, at the God, numbers? Oh, God, no, I was going with everything. I was going with, um, wow, you know, we can be the biggest here. The, 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 the money that meal prep makes and the margins in the meal prep are, are, are the biggie. That's where, you know, that's where a lot of the money was. Um, stores are, are ropey. You know, you can open three stores and one works. You know, mm. it, it is, it's risky. If you get it in the wrong place, that's it, you're knackered. Um, and we did make that mistake. We made that mistake with First Street when we opened that one. And did you make that mistake? Or? Um, oh, you know, my, my business partner was very much on board with it, but um, I'm happy to take the flack for that completely. Yeah, you and what, get it right. what sort of like transpired after that then? After you... So what happened was I bought Soulmate Food and um, my business partner uh, at the time, I'm going to name him, Jamie yeah. is his name. Um, I won't name his, his surname. Um, he, he said, let me deal with the acquisition of the company. Um, I want to bring, bring this in. You, you've got enough stress on your shoulders. You run kettlebell okay i'll deal with the staff i'll deal with this that and the other all the legals everything so great you deal with it and he cracked on and um if i'm honest completely ballsed it up we ended up with three production units 
So we had a rented one. We had one sat dormant next to Jamie's headquarter unit uh, that we couldn't afford to fit out. And then we had a third one in Rossendale. It was, it was just madness. That's miles away in Rossendale. Yeah, we ended up with 25 staff that um, were two bed over. Um, they came with you know three months notice periods and we, we, they wouldn't move, so we had to make them all redundant. The whole thing lost us an absolute fortune. That was the start of the, the pain, the money pain. That was when things started getting a bit, oh God, hairy. You know, we hadn't really felt it until then. What was, um, so that happened then. Mm. How were you trying to save that? What happened after that? Um, I wanted to do a Crowdcube campaign um, to raise two million quid. And um, Jamie didn't want to do it, just dismissed it and said Why? No. I don't know. I don't know. Because that seems like a really good idea. I know, I know. And we had the brand. We would have done it, you know. Because people are a... invested in the Kettlebell Kitchen brand, aren't they? Oh, yeah. And it was so well known in the UK. You know, every fitness buff knew what Kettlebell was in the UK. It was mad. Um, so we didn't do that. And unfortunately, two months later, um, you know, Jamie comes to us and says, we're going to be in a bit of a black hole at the end of this month. We're, we're, you know, we're going to be down 30 grand on... At what point wages. are you getting your... Because you opened one in Newcastle, didn't you? Mm. At what time did you do that? Uh, no, that was like six months, eight months later. Right. Um, so, so the start of the money problems was that there's buying that company. That, that knocked us for six. Um, and the way it was brought in and whatever. Um, but then, you know, Jamie came to us with an idea. I've got me, me best mate, best man at my wedding. Trust him uh, more than I trust anybody. Uh, and he's called Gary. And he wants to come in and he wants to invest. Um, we can have the money in the account in three days. I've gone through the business and financial models with him. He's happy. Um, so this is our answer. You know, this is going to give us some, some money to fit out the headquarter unit. And it's going to give her um, some money for the wages at the end of the month. So I thought, brilliant, let's go. Um, and he dealt with all the paperwork. Gary came in. Um, and yeah. So... Did you not actually ask about this guy? Now, I'm not saying this because this is the naivety yeah. bit of it, right? Mm -hmm. That I want to, everybody needs to understand. How naive were you back then not to check this guy? Oh, out and stuff? very naive. I was so naive. I mean, I knew of Gary. Um, I actually took over a call centre in South Africa that he used to run. Um, so I knew of him. What's his background? Uh, PPI. Right, okay. so he's earned all his money through PPI. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Gary came on and um, uh, unfortunately Gary wanted his FD to come on board and at the time, um, he's called Colin, and it was positioned to us that this was a luxury. You know, you're going to have a, an FD that's on my books. He's not on the company books, so you're not paying for him, don't worry about his wage. And he can take all the stresses and, and stuff off you of the finances that have been driving you a bit mad recently. Um, you know what it's like if anyone that's a, a business owner, especially for a medium-sized business, if you're a small business, you know, you're wearing 20 hats, you're stressed a bit, you're like, do you know what I mean? The yeah, finances no, it, are, yeah. are such a pain yeah. um, and they were really holding us back. You know, I was like a, I was like a storm of, of chaos everywhere I went because I just was, had too much pressure and too much things I was dealing with. So to know that those finances could be taken off us, um, you know, was, was a godsend. So I agreed, yeah, please help me with the finances. Come in, take it all off us. I'm buzzing with that. Um, and that was it, basically. Start off. That was the start of it. Um, two days before we were about to launch Newcastle, which would have been my fourth um, store, uh, I had communication, just saying off uh, Gary that the company needed to go into liquidation. It was in too much debt. You rang you up? He rang us up. Uh, Jamie rang us up. So Jamie started to suddenly be the messenger between everyone, right? right? He was like the little devil on me, sh well, the angel on my shoulder, I should say, who was trying to lead the way. Um, looking back now, I can see the manipulation and what was going on, but I couldn't at the time. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of the start of the end, if I'm honest. Um, so company has to go into liquidation and um, all the staff will be released without pay, Gary said on his email, um, which I've brought, but I won't, I won't go into them all. But uh, yeah, 
and go on. I was heartbroken, absolutely heartbroken. I just thought, what, what? Like, you know, I knew we were struggling month to month a bit. We were a grown business, you know? Um, but surely not, like, this can't happen. We can't not pay staff next week. Um, I'm launching Newcastle tomorrow, what's going on, you know? And I was like, we were just about to launch a Crowdcube campaign. So I was like, can we not just hold off for, for two months? Let, let this money come in, we'll, we'll hit two million quid. I knew we'd hit it. Uh, we'd pay off any fit out debt and whatever else debt and uh, we'd have a lovely chunk of money to go forward with here and in capital. Uh, no, no, there's not enough time, you can't do it. Little did I know, at that point, they set up two new companies. Being? Without me on them. Being what? KBK Meal Prep and KBK Stores Limited. How did you find that out? Um, I later got told that they'd done it by them. Um, but I didn't know they'd done it then. Um, so they told us that they'd set them up. And they told us that, I said, why aren't I on them? And they said, well, because you're going to get slaughtered in the media. You're going to get hit in the media. And this cannot look like a typical Phoenix job. It can't. So they were honest with you and they told you that yeah. they've actually manipulated you and done this and this is what's going to happen to you? No, I didn't know at this stage. No, that's jumping What the they told so. you afterwards? Um, no. So I knew. Like, I, I, I knew they'd set up two new companies. And I said, why aren't I on them? And that was why. So, but at this stage, I understood. I thought, okay, yeah, okay, fine. Mm. You know, tr- I, I was getting text messages, Carly, trust us through this process. We're going to put the company into liquidation. We're going to set up two new companies, but they already had done it. Um, I've booked a meeting with insolvency company on Monday. You need to be there. It'll go into liquidation. We'll buy back the assets for next to nothing. We'll sack off all that debt. And everyone will go forward with the same shareholding and will be profitable straight away. So, obviously, you know, the staff will be released then, but they'll get paid then. So, you're going to temporarily be hitting the media. Just deal with it. Not interested in, in how you feel about it. Put the emotion to one side. And obviously that happened, and I got absolutely slaughtered by the media. And trolls and all sorts of different so, things. Just talk me through that, mate, because it's so relevant at the minute. Yeah, it really Obviously, is, yeah. so, w- what happened? The MEM... MEM picked up on the story. So we just told the staff, and hours later I got a call off the MEM. But this is a story that I've heard, that everybody messaged me, or oh, you'd seen what Carly Jones has done to, oh, or, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it was yeah. like, why oh, will I fire this? So nobody, it was just me that was on Company's House as the director. So these, in fact, two directors behind the scenes, Jamie, Gary, and Colin, basically, um, didn't, didn't really get a look in. It was just me, my face, plastered all over, Facebook and the MEN, and... Um, other news outlets picked it up and ploughed it out and it was basically Carly Jones has not paid her staff um, and honestly the, the, the trolling and the comments was disgusting nobody knew what was going on behind the scenes nobody knew you know it, it was it was a shit situation let's be honest about it it was awful haven't what, it? What are some of the things t- tell me about some of the things that have been happening to just to give people a bit of context of course yeah I mean if you th- it was stuff like um, she should go and sell a house and a car to pay the staff. Um, I had on the comment section on the MEN, which they refused to take off Facebook. Um, it was it was rough. It was horrible. There was lies put down there. People were dragging stuff up from from me past when I was a teen. I had bloody, you know, I had some just horrible st- death threats. I had I had pictures of me mum put on. I had pictures of Kira's engagement ring, my partner's engagement ring, put on from two years ago. How can she afford that? Pay your staff, sell it. I was like, bloody hell, it was You're horrible. Death threats. It was personal, yeah. I had inboxes saying, go and hang yourself. And people were putting your address on Facebook as well? I had people turn up at me home. What do you mean? I had people knocking at my door. So saying what? I, didn't, I don't know, I didn't answer, mate. I didn't answer. That's dark, aren't it? It was, it was hard, it was really hard. So not only was I losing my me, me company, or, or I thought, well, at that point I didn't know. I thought, we were going to set up and, and go again, you know, so, um, but it was, I was going through a bloody dark time and then I'm just getting slaughtered by everybody. Are you, are you at that time suffering like mental health? No, I've, I, you know, I could sit here and say that, but I, I wasn't, I'm a strong, I'm a strong character, thank God, but how it, you it was, how it you was get, hard. How did you get through that time? Look, I mean, it, it, it affected us in other ways. So mm. I wasn't eating. I, I, I had a constant nervous, 
you know, jolt in my stomach. It was horrible. It's horrible. But luckily, um, you know, my mental health, you know, mm. it's there. And it's luckily I didn't go in that horrible deep dark hole that some people kind of get out of. And I can thoroughly understand why they can it. How long did it go on for that? Um, that went on for a few weeks. Um, and look, I mean, at the end of the day, I thought that I was still involved completely. I was used to save all the staff and save the company, basically. Um, and still believing that my name was going to go on those companies, those two new companies, you know, after this all blew over. And um, the day came to buy back the assets of the company or to put a bid in. And um, Jamie asked us to come into the office, so I did. And he said, right, it's been valued. It's 80 grand or whatever it was. You need 38 grand for your shares. Can you get it? And I said, yes, I can. Give us an hour. So I went off, sorted the money out, and I sent a text to the FD and Jamie saying, I've got my money for the shares. Let's go ahead. Let's get it before anybody else does. And uh, he came in back in my office and he said, right, we've got a deal for you. Um, Gary wants to buy all of the, the, share, the assets for 80 grand, right? Um, you put your 38 grand into your salon that like you, you've wanted to do with your partner for, for quite a while. You do that, you know, you, yeah, it'll be great. You can, it was manipulating. Um, and he said, um, and all Gary wants for that is an extra 5% of your shares. And I said, OK. I said, but can I get some paperwork? Um, yeah, we'll sort it, we'll sort it, don't worry. Gary was my best man at my wedding, don't worry. I will never let anything happen to you, Carly. Do you trust me? Yes or no? Yes. Right. Do you know, that's how this was positioned. So I had to go ahead. You know, there was time, unnecessary time constraints put on it. We've got to know by 2 p.m. You know what I mean? When yeah. they didn't, it yeah. took weeks for the sale to go through, but I didn't know this. Um, and then the insolvency company said, offered, uh, invited us to bid. I said, no, no, fine. Gary's, Gary's buying them back, but we'll all get our shares back. And then um, the killer day came on Valentine's Day last year and I was summoned to Gary's office and he sat me down and it was him and the FD that now owns the company. Um, and he said, it's a game. I've won the game. You've lost. I own 100% of Kettlebell Kitchen and you don't. So that's your face? Yep. And that was it. Boom, lost. And I, I just, I was, I mean, my heart's pounding. I felt sick. I felt like I was going to faint. And I was like, what? And he said, yep. You don't own it. I was like, are you joking? You've, where's your paperwork to say I was going to give you shares back? I was like, so you've just used Jamie in the middle. So it was clear that they were just running around us in circles. Did Jamie know what was going on? Oh yeah, fully believe he did. He must have known because Jamie walked away with soul made food. So I walked away with nothing. Jamie walked away with soul made food, but he claimed that he'd been done over by Gary as well. But then he was still involved in Kettlebell for weeks after, helping Hoover and help Gary. It was so obvious he was, he was involved. It wouldn't surprise me if there's some sort of gentleman's agreement that he owns part of the companies now. So um, He just said that straight to your face? Yeah. So he made us an offer. Uh, he said, look, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good person, so I'm going to make you an offer. I don't need to do this, but um, I'm going to offer you KBK Stores Limited. So you can have, you can have the stores, you can have, so basically it was Anco, it's one store. Um, however, he has the list of, of um, the license agreement and it was hideous. It was like, you have to pay me a thousand pounds a month forever. You have to sign everything off through me. It was just a power trip load of bollocks. It was awful. It was like, you cannot breathe without asking me if you can. Do you know what? It, he would have put a lead around my neck and he would have loved it. Um, spoilt me creativity and just put us in a, in a box and I just said you can piss off absolutely my head was a mess though I was stormed out of the meeting um, and by the time I got out of it I had already been locked out of all the social media everything but, they've been planning but, it for ages yeah Jamie was the one his media company was in control of the social media that's how I knew 100% he was involved because he was the one that instructed all that social media to be locked down and me kicked out of it all and I'd built, without any media company, I built that Instagram from scratch, up to 44,000 myself. Never used a company. And uh, it was only a week before that asked us to change the owner and the email address. 
and it was Jamie that asked. So I knew he was involved. I had the choice to buy back um, the shares, being the only sole director. I had the, the first kind of dabs of buying all of it back. Um, and I could have came up with 80 grand, I could have got that money, and I could have cut them two out, and I didn't. Wow. I'd, you know, I'm, moralistically, I can't do that. That's not me. That's not me as a person. That's greedy, that, you know. Little did I know they were going to cut me out three weeks later. But you don't, why would, I don't, I don't, I, I can't get wrapped my head around it why you do that to somebody else, mate. Just for the fact of just money. He, he said to me, if you, if you hit out at me on, on media, I will make you penniless. And that's one of the reasons I haven't spoke out. I'm just going to be fucked in it after this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope so. Why have you decided to talk about this now? I've been silent long enough. Um, you know, I was threatened. I was threatened by Gary um, on an email. And he said, and I will post, I'll post it on my blog. You know, I'm going to write a detailed blog about this. I think, I want to get the awareness out there. You know, s these guys have got away with it. Or they think they've got away with it now. Um, why should I be just silent and keep my mouth shut? You know, people want to know. Every day I'm asked what happened to Kettlebell Kitchen, Carly. Why aren't you talking about it? Honestly, every day I'm asked. And it's about time I spoke out about it. So many people this happens to, and so many people have reached out, and similar has happened. And you can't do anything about it. If a business partner basically ousts you out of your business, unless you've got 50 grand to take them to court. You're screwed. You can't really do a great deal. Um, and look what's happened to us. You know, I've, I've, the founder's been taken out of our own business, and it's now been rebranded. Now Gary claims he's the founder of KBK, which you know, it's just power. It's a power trip thing, ego thing. You know, when like there was that time where you couldn't, well, you tried to, and we've talked about this before, about getting the money to pay all your staff and stuff. Yeah. Um, th were you thinking about them people, them sort of like staff members that you, have you oh, reached I... out to them and stuff? I was devastated. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a text that I sent to them saying I am absolute, I wanted to remortgage me home um, to pay the staff. See, nobody knows this, mate. No, the, nobody so, knows. No, no. And everyone just thinks she didn't pay her staff. What a devil. And I can see that. I can see why. But if they knew the truth and the turmoil I was going through, I was left to go and tell all of the staff, myself, uh, with my sales manager, um, on payday, that the staff weren't getting paid. I mean, that was, that was awful. It was disgusting. I couldn't believe I was doing it. The, the business partners weren't there. They didn't help us. Do you know what I mean? The phones were off on that day. They weren't interested. And um, when the media hit out, they said, you're not allowed to reply to any media. Don't see anything. But I, looking back now, it was just part of the plan. They, just, they needed me, this founder, this, this founder that had had all this great publicity. They needed me to be hit in the media to do their plan and what they were going to do. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And you can see that this was all conspired from early on because they set up those two new companies, they knew what they were doing. How does this affect you with like building relationships now in business and stuff like that? Do you, yeah. has it changed you in any way? It has, yeah. Oh God, yeah. It's made me more savvy. I've, at the end of the day, I'm at fault. I let these people into my business, you know, and I can blame them all day long for this and that and we shouldn't have done that. But at the end of the day, I'm to blame. I shouldn't have brought these guys in. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have let them control us. I should have had everything in, and writing. And I want to speak out today because not only from your own sanity, I need this off my chest. I need to get this out there. Yeah. You know, um, it's been sort of locked in a dark place in my brain for too long and it needs to come out. But also to help others, you know, you've got to spot a poisonous business partner early and you've got to do something about it. I think that's it. I just I want to say how proud I am for doing this and oh, the honour that I've had to help tell your story. I hope it I just to be one person just kind of makes them think to kind of go look. I'm not going to make this decision a big thing for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there, is there any advice after everything that you've done now? Is there any piece of advice that you could sort of leave this video on? Um, please be savvy. Don't lose control. Um. 
really research your business partners and, and invest, potential investors uh, before you bring them on board. Get all the paperwork, do it yourself, so you're in control. You know, little did I know that paperwork wasn't submitted and things didn't happen. You just need to be on the ball. No matter how busy you are, you've got to, you know, the, don't just trust somebody by, by their word, unfortunately. And I'm not saying don't trust anyone in business, but just bloody hell, be careful.